After a 15-year hiatus, the Ontario government is bringing back the spring bear hunt to curb the number of problem bears. Is that the best way to promote public safety by controlling Ontario's bear population? Or is the spring hunt an unethical, unnecessary move? Let's debate that. Joining us now to help answer that in Sudbury, Ontario, Joseph Hammer. He's a professor in the School of Engineering Technology and Environmental Studies at Cambrian College. He comes to us from the studios at Laurentian University. And with us here in studio, Peter Politis. He's the mayor of Cochrane, Ontario. Mark Rickman, senior wildlife biologist at the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. And Mike McIntosh, founder of Bear With Us, a sanctuary and rehabilitation center for bears. And Joseph, it's good to have you on the line from Sudbury. And to you three, welcome to our studios here in Toronto. You just heard the interview I did with the Minister of Natural Resources. Peter, why don't you start? Any reaction to what you heard? Oh, sure. First off, I agree with the Minister. It is definitely a safety issue, and we, and we definitely appreciate the efforts being made to deal with safety. It's our lives that we're dealing with up in northern Ontario, and we also appreciate that it's, a, it's an emotional issue because there are a lot of different dynamics associated to it. I did find it interesting that the Minister did reference how policing is, or police were having trouble managing the issue and that they weren't best suited to it. And, of course, my question would be, then, why has the Ministry of Natural Resources divested to policing and divested the responsibility for bear management to an entity that really isn't trained as the MNR is? Um, I would also take a little bit of an issue with the comments around it not being about politics. I think it's all about politics, and you would, well, rightly so, Steve, identified uh, the issues around Cochrane, which is the municipality that I represent, and uh, that we had uh, 70 instances in Cochrane, which puts its ratio of uh, per capita at one of the highest in the province, certainly higher than the big five that the He ministry. referred to that, so that, that uh, he said not in total numbers, but maybe per yeah. capita, you're number one. Well, that's, well, we're, we're right up near the top, actually. We're, we're higher than all the big five municipalities that they decide to focus on. And that's the important part, because it draws the question for us to the fact that, you know, if it is about safety, what about the safety of everybody else in Northern Ontario? You have 260 municipalities in Northern Ontario, 90% of them are 3,000 people or less. You're focusing on less than 2% of the municipalities. What about everybody else's safety? So you feel Cochrane should have been added to the list? Well, I think Cochrane's been driving this from day one. We were the first municipality to drive the issue. We also, also made a lot of suggestions to the minister around the pilot project and so on. No, we haven't been recognized. So when he says Cochrane has been covered, 3%. Of Cochrane is covered. And it's only coincidental because Timmins is the area that is being covered by the uh, by the management. Unit. Let's add. You won't mind my saying. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, you're the conservative nominated Absolutely, candidate for yes. the riding of uh, of uh, Timiskaming Cochrane. There you go. Okay, uh, Mike. How about you? Well, I uh, I heard what the minister said as well, and I believe public safety is is an issue, and so is the issue of nuisance bears. However, uh, we disagree on how it's going to be addressed. And just a bit of my background, since 1992, I've been dealing with human bear conflicts. A lot of people like to call it nuisance bears, but I prefer to call it human bear conflicts. And uh, nuisance bears is primarily related to food sources. The abundance of or the lack of can cause a lot mm -hmm. of nuisance bears or very few. The, uh, a few stats, and these uh, facts that I have are available to everybody around this table. Um, if we want to talk about human safety, uh, bears aren't really a huge threat to people. In 1881, a man was killed when he was uh, approached a bear that he had trapped. In the last 100 years, seven people in Ontario have been killed by four different bears. So if you average that out, one bear kills a person every 26 years. But sure, sure, surely it's not just about deaths. It's, it's not just about deaths. So it's also about injuries. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that isn't shared publicly a lot um, is the fact that in over 50% of the cases of bear attacks where the bear defends itself, so self-defense, there's dogs involved. Dogs off leash is important. Not dogs on leash because it's two different things. Uh, the, the bear attacks we um, were aware of this year, Peterborough and Cochrane, there's a dog involved in both cases. We cannot just say, you know, that was the cause because these people obviously would be terrified and who would want to be in their place? Okay, hold but, that thought right there for a second if I can, because I, I really want to get more direct reaction to something that you heard from the minister. So come on in here and tell me what you thought about something the minister said that you wanted to react to. Well, I'll, I'll state it simply. Uh, we started to cover a lot of ground there, but uh, I'll try to keep it uh, a little short. As many people are aware, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters has been advocating for the return of the spring bear hunt since it was cancelled, actually, in 1999. So for the past 15 years, we have put a lot of um, time, money, and... Uh, man effort into uh, advocating for the return of the spring bear hunt. I think it's we, called person effort nowadays. Person effort, thank you very much. Whatever. You're absolutely right. We view the uh, spring bear hunt as part of our hunting heritage. 
and uh, um, I guess the controlling or the, or the reduction of human bear conflicts is only a small part of the many benefits of, of uh, regulated hunting and licensed hunting. Um, obviously, the socioeconomic, the biological, the recreational and spiritual uh, benefits that, that many people um, uh, feel and uh, that uh, licensed hunting provides to the province of Ontario. Uh, like I said, human bear conflict is only one very small part of that. But nonetheless, we applaud the Minister of Natural Resources um, for the proposed pilot program. Okay, let's go up to Sudbury. Joseph, what's your view on something you heard from the Minister? Well, uh, just a couple of things about the choice of the areas that um, uh, the ministry has uh, uh, taken. Uh, for example, Sudbury has had a steadily decreasing number of uh, nuisance bear calls over the past five years or so. Uh, last year, the nuisance bear problem here was almost non-existent. We had maybe 500 calls as compared to uh, 4,300 or something like that in, in uh, 2008. Uh, so uh, Sudbury certainly was not one of the jurisdictions that was, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, grave danger from bears, uh, not last year. I'm not saying that it has always been like that, but it all, only com confirms what Mike said, that uh, nuisance bear problems uh, or problem bears um, are mostly controlled by food availability, and, and it's both natural foods and also foods that are provided uh, uh, to, to them by people, uh, whether it's uh, intentionally or unintentionally around residences. The other thing mm -hmm. that I sort of would like to comment on uh, that the minister said is, is this thing of uh, teachers wearing whistles uh, uh, in the schoolyards. Um, there is not a single case in, in uh, Ontario or Canada or probably in North America where Bear would have killed or injured a child in a schoolyard. Um, in fact, dogs are much more dangerous for kids. Um, than, uh, than bears are, and so these teachers should be blowing their whistles when dogs approach the schoolyards uh, instead of bears. So is it your view, Joseph, that somehow bears are being unfairly targeted? In some ways, yes, uh, it, it is my view, and, and I think that uh, people should be much more careful with uh, uh, the way that they um, uh, handle their uh, their garbage, uh, the way they handle uh, bird feeders, the way they handle uh, barbecues, uh, and so on. And uh, Elliot Lake has shown that um, if, if you control these attractants, you can significantly reduce the, the bear problems in a community. Uh, they uh, have done all that. They have introduced bylaws which uh, uh, forbid um, uh, that people put out their garbage night before pickup, uh, as well as commercial garbage disposal was, was controlled and, and so on. So, uh, you know, it, it has worked quite well for them. Uh, so BearWise program can work if, if it's done properly. Okay, Mike, let's just understand, because people who, who live in cities, which is most of the people in Ontario, don't have to deal with this, who live in big cities, I should say. Very true. Um, there, there weren't a lot of berries in the wilderness this year, right? Which is why the bears were going hungry, which is why they're coming closer to more settled areas. Depends on the location, Steve. Okay, Certain fill, areas, fill in those blanks. Okay, so I've worked with bears, a couple hundred bears I've live trapped and relocated. Uh, nuisance, and that depends on the year. But uh, wild food sources will either keep bears out of town or have them come into town. But they don't come in to visit people. They come in because there's a reason for it. Bird feeders are full of bird seed, maybe sunflower seed, or poorly stored garbage. Um, I object to the spring bear hunt because they can shoot as many bears as they like, but if they don't have people clean up their habits, the bears are still going to come into town. They're still going to walk through schoolyards. They're still going to walk down main streets. But if people are properly educated and they don't believe the hyperbole about <clears throat> watch your kids and, you know, because like Joe said, bears haven't attacked anybody in a town ever. But your view is bears aren't dangerous, they're just there looking for food, and as a result, if people bears stay have out the of their way... Bears have to be dangerous because they're big, strong animals. Mm -hmm. They're not normally dangerous. Uh, bears that get used to human establishment, human activity, have not hurt anybody even, or killed anybody. All attacks, minor or major, or killings, have happened out in wilderness areas, away from towns. And the spring bear hunt will not target the bears that come into town and get the bird feeders. They're still going to be there, and they're still going to be shot or killed 
like they have been the past 15 years. Peter wants in on that. Yeah, I'll tell you that I appreciate everybody's sense on the academics of the issue, Steve, but a lot of what's being inserted right now is just not accurate, and I would prefer to focus on reality. In our community alone, there were 70 instances this year, and you can't focus on the MNR stats. You have to focus on policing stats now because it's the police that actually deal with the issue. Uh, of that 70 incidents, uh, five people were in their homes with bears in their homes seeking people in their homes. What, were, what jurisdiction is this? This is in Cochrane. In Cochrane yes. alone, population? Uh, 6,500 people. You had f five incidences of bears in the home. In the home, and one of the two incidences in the entire province where it was a near fatality, and it was going to be a fatality if two women just, just didn't happen along and scare the bear off. Bears are getting a lot braver, they're getting a lot more aggressive, and, and, and there's a lot of reasons for it. And well, I, his and, point is they need the food. Well, they need the food because they're overpopulating in the forest and they're being pushed into the cities. And if you speak to the hunters and the people who are actually manage bears on a, on a yearly basis, they'll tell you even this year some interesting dynamics have come out of it where bears' faces are primarily scarred up, the male bears, because uh, their view is they're being pushed around by the larger males and being forced into the cities where the easier food is. If we don't have any resistance to bears, these are, these are not big, cuddly creatures, unfortunately. These are the top of the food chain, and we can't lose sight of that. It's the top of the food chain, 500 to 800 pounds. These aren't raccoons jumping out of garbage cans. Mm. Uh, we have mothers and children who can't walk their, their, their kids to school. They're afraid to because bears are jumping out of the backyard. We have people shooting across the backyards with guns and bows and arrows. Uh, this is not an academic scenario where you study what the issues are that incite bears and don't incite bears. They are the top of the food chain. So and if we don't manage them, then we have issues. A limited reintroduction of the spring bear hunt, you feel, is appropriate. I think we're missing a complete bear management policy, you know, a complete bear management program of which the spring bear hunt would be an important tool. It's not the answer, it's part of the answer. So let's figure out then, um, maybe I can go to you on this one, Mark. Uh, since they canceled the spring bear hunt in 1999, does anybody keep track of the stats? Do we know whether or not there is a significant increase in the bear population in Northern Ontario? Accurate stats are difficult to come by with respect to the trend in bear populations. The MNR has a, a fairly up-to-date estimate of the bear population as it exists recently. Um, but the trend in bear populations uh, back in time, especially since the cancellation of the spring bear hunt, those trends and that data is very difficult to come by. So a lot of the information that both um, uh, citizens as well as the MNR use is anecdotal. The question is, do we have to rely on the sheer absolute number of human bear conflicts or complaints that are registered? Or do we have to look at the proportion of those that are serious conflicts or serious injuries or serious threats to public safety? Well, and has that proportion gone up? I've got a professor of environmental studies in Sudbury who I saw, I don't, I don't want to say smirking, but you had a look on your face a second ago, Joseph, when, when this comment was just made. What was that about? Well, uh, it's a fact that uh, there are a lot of numbers being thrown around and uh, there hasn't been a very reliable estimate of the bear numbers in Ontario. And it's very hard to get that because Ontario is a large province. But uh, uh, in uh, before the cancellation of, of the spring bear hunt in 1999, the official estimate by the MNR was 75 uh, to 100,000 bears. And uh, for the past seven years, Dr. Martin Obard of the MNR was conducting um, DNA uh, research um, with uh, barbed wire hair traps uh, from which he can determine how many individuals visit certain sites and so on. He's done this right across the huntable range in Ontario. So that's everywhere there are wildlife management units. And um, he has come up with, with an estimate extrapolated to the province of uh, about 95,000 uh, bears plus or minus 10,000. Okay. So you're basically saying it hasn't, it hasn't changed at all? It doesn't seem to have changed very much according to these estimates. And how reliable do you think these estimates are? Well, there is nothing more reliable than this l latest study that was done by uh, Dr. O Obard because no one has en done or attempted anything like that prior to, the to that. Okay, Mark, the suggestion is the bear population hasn't increased. It's pretty static since 1999. I'm pretty sure he just answered uh, or I guess uh, um, provided support for my argument is that by far the recent estimate is uh, the best um, and more, most robust estimate of the bear population in Ontario. Previous estimates were not nearly as robust and it's very difficult to compare them. So it's apples and oranges, you think? Almost, yep. Hmm. So what do we do about this? <laughs> well, about the population estimate itself, mm -hmm. 
the DNA uh, snare program that uh, uh, Dr. Hammer just uh, referenced, that's a great starting point. Gives us a current population estimate for black bears in Ontario. Things like that need to be repeated to get at the trend information that you just asked about. This is a single point in time. Actually, it's not even a single point in time. It's actually seven different points in time if it was collected over a period of seven years. Now, that has to be repeated over time to determine if bear populations are increasing or decreasing across the population. But do, the Peter, do we, do we want to shoot more bears to reduce the population of bears and therefore have fewer, in, is that the theory? Shoot more, there will be fewer, we will have fewer bear-human contacts, therefore everybody's safer. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. And you can hear by the discussion here that this is not an exact science. Mm -hmm. Yet we've made decisions that are affecting people's lives at the end of the day. And this is where we take issue, especially leaders in the region who watch this on a daily basis. We have people's lives at stake here. So we need to have better data and better information as part of the problem that needs to be introduced. And in it bears lives at stake too. Well, of course. And, I'm, and, I'm and that's my point. Is, but... Well, my point is there's a balance between mm -hmm. the species and ourselves and Northern Ontarians who occupy one one person per square kilometer, which is basically as much part of the ecosystem as the species, the other species that are in it. So if we don't have the data, then I, there needs to be a program to collect the data properly. And I'll suggest to you, Steve, and the group very politely, this is more of a behavioral issue than it is a population issue. And if in fact, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll just throw a pro provocative question out there, if in fact the bear population hasn't gone up, and I don't necessarily agree with that, then what does that say about the argument that you know, this was all about saving cubs and increasing the population through saving cubs? Obviously, the cubs aren't being saved and the population is not going up if that's the argument. And I keep coming back to the fact that we can go in circles on this all day long. Bottom line is, we have bears in the streets in our communities, small communities. 90% of the Northern Ontario are 3,000 people or less. So it's not Sudbury, it's not North Bay, it's not Sault Ste. Marie. You don't have bears downtown Sudbury and North Bay and Sault Ste. Marie. You have them downtown in these municipalities. Mothers, children, people, families are being threatened. They're in their home with bears going in their home because that behavior is changing. They're getting braver. The male bears that were targeted in Hunt Steve are now becoming more populated and they're coming back every year having not experienced pushback and getting braver and they end up becoming the bullies in the forest and seeking people for okay. food because they're hungry. Let, let me go to the other side, which is we did speak in the interview with the minister about this notion of mother bears being killed and their cubs therefore going orphaned in the spring. Yeah. Is and that how big a problem is that? <clears throat> cubs being orphaned without the hunt? Not a big problem. Uh, there's been a lot of misinformation spread around. Uh, Male bears do not commonly prey on cubs. It does happen, but as Dr. Leonard Rogers told me over the phone, he said it's very, very rare. It's convenient to spread that information around. There's been population estimates spread around just pulled out of the air of 150,000. We now know that the population has been relatively static. But biologically, it has to be relatively static because in 15 years, the population could not have exploded because bears are the second slowest reproducing animal in North America next, next to the muskox. So let's talk about bear behavior as Peter suggested. Um, bears that are used to people, human activity in towns and cities. And I remember walking down the main streets of Huntsville. So they do come into town sometimes, small towns. Mm -hmm. um, they've never been known to attack anybody. Bears in houses, which I've addressed uh, directly, have never been known to hurt anybody. They might have run through somebody, knocked somebody over trying to get out of the house. These that? bears, these bears are, don't hurt anybody. So they're not, we're not making those bears dangerous, but our... Another provocative question, if we're shooting at them, chasing them with dogs and injuring them, maybe we're making those bears potentially more dangerous to poor innocent hiker that's hiking down a trail and with their dogs. How can we say the largest animal on the food chain doesn't hurt people? It's not that bears go out and intentionally try to hurt people, it's instinctive. They're the largest animal in the food chain, they're starving and they're looking for food. Peter, that's Listen, a falsehood. Well, that's, that's not a, a falsehood. falsehood. They'll talk to a guy named Joe Asgar in, in Cochrane who had his, mouth in the, his head in the bear's mouth, well, who can describe to you what the that, throat of the bear looks like and still hear the teeth grinding on his skull. That's hyperbole. Talk to people well. like that. Okay, that's, that's not a, hyperbole, one, that's one reality, more Mike. Okay, one more stat then, and this is verifiable as well. The 15 years since the bear hunt was cancelled versus the 15 years before the bear hunt was cancelled, mm -hmm. there was more people injured by bears or killed the 15 years prior than the 15 years since. How do you know that? We don't have the data to support well, that, Mike. It, it we just talked about how loose the data is. Yeah. I'm talking to you about reality. I'm talking to you about families, five of them in Cochrane, mothers. Imagine yourself with your child sitting in a room, locked behind the door with your, your wife and her child while you're at work, and there's bears in the house looking for them, and they're calling their government for help, and they're getting go to www bearwise.com. Uh, Mike, that is unacceptable. Good, good point. Okay, can I bring up? The Bearwise program was an excellent program. It was well-researched, the, the ministry people f went to various jurisdictions, Canada and the U.S., they came up with an excellent program. And in the cities where it was well-implemented, it worked excellent. However, there was one downfall. What? They downloaded the responsibility of bears, human bear downfall. conflicts, and 
down to the municipalities. How can you blame town councils and city police for not wanting to deal with an issue they have no idea how to deal with? No training for it. It's a huge downfall. So so now, but I want one more thing though. So now these municipalities and the police, they have no way out other than than the support to bring control over that. Yeah, I know. Anyway, that shouldn't happen because bear wise would have worked if everybody was. Okay, Joseph's been sitting patiently listening. Let me get, come on in here, Joseph. Chime in on what you've heard. Well, I I really don't think that this uh, pilot project is going to make a big difference. Uh, I agree. You know, in the past, as as it has been said before, uh, there used to be non-resident hunters uh, hunting bear in Ontario. Uh, It was an attractive and lucrative business, and this is one of the main points of contention. People want to uh, have that income back, and a lot of the pressure and the lobbying for the return of the spring bear hunt is is has economic, um, uh, you know, uh, opportunity. Yeah, but the minister yeah, said, yeah. or David Orizetti said, this was not done in response to an economic development argument. It was strictly a safety argument. Well, the minister also said that there was a brown bear uh, running around uh, a town at Halloween, and uh, unless this was a bear that escaped from the circus or, or from the zoo, uh, we have no brown hair, brown bears within about 4,000 kilometers of, of Ontario. So uh, the minister is, is not always right. Well, okay. Are you a hunter, Joseph? Just curious. Um, yes, I am a licensed hunter. You are a hunter. Do you hunt bears? No, I don't. Why not? I just, I've worked with bears. Uh, I worked with them for 10 years. I've crawled into bear dens uh, during the winter with with bears that were staring me in the eyes. I really don't uh, feel that I I should be hunting this animal, uh, and especially not, not in the spring. Do you think that it's a good idea to get rid of the fall bear hunt as well? That one, of course, has not been canceled over the years. No, I don't. I, I mean, if people want to uh, hunt bears, they should hunt bears. But I, I think it should be done ethically. And what does that mean? Well, uh, I, I think that the spring bear hunt, uh, from the point of ethics, uh, there are a couple of problems with that. You are hunting uh, animals that uh, were starving for six months and just came out of the dens. And they really don't have a choice but to to go to these bait stations. And, uh, you know, so they go there, they get habituated to eating there, and then one day uh, someone sits on a tree and, and blasts them. So uh, that, I personally uh, have a problem with that. And, and the other uh, uh, ethical problem for me is that you should not be... Um, in the bush uh, hunting species that uh, uh, are accompanied with uh, by um, you know dependent uh, young animals and uh, you know in in the case of bears they do have their young and I'm not saying that uh, orphaning uh, uh, cubs is is a major problem uh, but it does happen during the spring. Okay let me get Mark to respond to some of those ethical arguments you just heard. Well actually I'll start with where he left off is uh, with respect to orphaning of cubs <clears throat> the orphaning of cubs by licensed hunters, unfortunately, we cannot say it's zero. Uh, it will never be zero, probably never was zero. Um, however, the MNR um, research biologist, the black bear biologist, has stated in the past publicly that orphaning of bear cubs by licensed hunters it was an extremely rare event, um, likely far less than the number of cubs that are orphaned by vehicles every year. And um, the MNR has neither the capacity nor the desire to manage wildlife at the individual level to ensure the health and safety of every animal, of every species in its jurisdiction is is ludicrous. Wildlife is managed across North America at the very least, if not around the world, at the population level. And the spring bear hunt did not create a sustainability issue. There was no population level impact of the spring bear hunt whatsoever. Okay, how about the issue that after an animal has been hibernating for six months, comes out of hibernation, is desperate for food, you set up these bait traps and then kill them. Behavioral research has actually shown that it's not nearly as easy to harvest bears over bait as, as some might think, as, as non-hunters might think especially, because there is an abundance in most years of natural food sources, and a bear is not obligated to visit a bait site. But on those it, years, like the past year, where there are not natural sources of food available, Is that an ethical issue then? No, I don't believe so at all. First of all, if part of the management purpose is to 
decrease bear populations or at the very least maintain them at a sustainable level. You have you ha you have to ensure or you don't have to ensure, but you have to try to achieve a certain level of harvest. Absolutely, baiting does increase hunter success rates. Uh, cannot argue. Can that. I ask a real nerdy question here? <laughs> I notice everybody. You just used the word harvest. I heard the, the minister use the word dispatch. Why, why, why does kill? everybody use synonyms around here? The when word I say kill, harvest, I, I'm referring yeah. to license hunting or aboriginal harvest, something like that. When he says dispatch, culling, killing, that's usually just the death of an animal without all of the ancillary benefits that the death of that animal actually provides, whether they be the socioeconomic benefits of license hunting, the recreational and spiritual, spiritual benefits, or the wildlife management benefits. Yeah. None of those benefits are realized when that bear is killed in somebody's backyard. I'm, I'm not taking a position on the issue, oh, but it does enough. seem like people are trying to use synonyms to avoid what this is all about, which is killing. Well, That's it, what it's about. Steve, killing That's would really suggest true. there's no sustainability to it, there's no program to it. I mean, it's another buzzword that people may mm -hmm. want to use. Harvest, under, harvest is the proper way to do I would suggest to uh, determine it, because it suggests there's a program there. There's sustainability. We're not out there slaughtering animals the way people would want, or some people would want you to believe. You know, I, I would speak ethically, and I understand the ethics associated with this. I'm just speaking re realistically in terms of people's lives. Uh, ethically, I have a problem with people's lives being put at risk with policies that are based on politics mm -hmm. and misinformation. What's the politics? Well, the politics is, uh, you you explained to me why uh, uh, the, the government of the day decided to cancel the spring bear hunt. You, in your intro, you explained it quite clearly. There's an individual with a lot of money who threatened to, uh, to affect the political career of the individual. That's mm -hmm. politics. You know, the misinformation is rampant because we don't have all the accurate information. The leading biologist in the province for the MNR has identified that 25,000 cubs a year on average are born. 10,000 of those cubs a year die of natural causes. He, this individual identified that there are probably about 25 cubs that got caught up in the spring bear hunt. So less than one-tenth of one percent of the mortality rate is what led to people's lives, mothers, children, everybody else and families in Northern Ontario being put at risk. And Steve, that's just unacceptable. It's wrong. We need to step back. We need to do things that aren't half measured like the pilot project is today, but we need to actually get proper data. It should be part of a program. Mm -hmm. We have people's lives at risk. There should be money available for that. And we need to start actually putting a program in place that doesn't see the majestic creatures that bears are being slaughtered and shot in the side of the road by police and left there. Peter, let me ask this follow-up. You know, there are many issues in Ontario which have a north-south divide. Right. Uh, Queen's I wouldn't Park, know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know all about that. I don't have to tell you. Uh, Queen's Park is very tightly ensconced in downtown Toronto. Sure. And needless to say, there are many Northern Ontarians who feel that Queen's Park being in the south, they don't listen to the concerns of Northerns right. adequately. There are not too many people who hunt downtown in Toronto with shotguns, right? right? Okay. So is, is there a north-south issue going on here in as much as the Northerners think, here are some fancy pants people down in Queen's Park who think they've got the solution, but they're not up here and they don't really get how it works. Well, I guess the way, the best analogy I would use for that is that in this part of the province, southern Ontario, there were wolves, bears, cougars that existed before people came along. And my polite suggestion to people is before you come to try to correct the backyard of an entire way of life, an entire race of people that you're not completely familiar with, even though the intentions are good, maybe reintroduce those animals back into southern Ontario, shut down half of the farmland so you can do that, and take care of your backyard so you have some credibility when you come back and speak to people who actually live with the animals and who manage those animals on a general basis sustainably. Is that an issue, Mike? Well, oh, um, if, if people want to coexist with bears, it's not that difficult, but they need the proper education on how to do it. They don't need to be scared by a whole lot of illegitimate and you know, made up facts. Uh, human safety is an issue. It's got to no, no, continue. No, but my point is here, my point is that a lot of the people who will ultimately make the decisions on these kinds of things spend an awful lot of time in downtown Toronto. Now, David Orizetti represents the Sioux, oh, I get that, maybe. but, but you he know spends what? a lot of time in Toronto the and the so does the Ontario cabinet. The minister cabinet. who introduced the bill into the legislature from Thunder Bay was down in Toronto trying to raise money. So he better not want to start a north-south divide. Uh, but the fact is that the bears, <laughs> <laughs> but the bears that I've worked with for 20 years, Dr. Joe's worked with, Marty Olbart, they're the same animal. They react the same way. They don't come to people to say hi, they come to people when food's available. If we curtail that and help people learn how to curtail that, mm -hmm. I don't think the problem goes away. Like well, let's, let's spend five minutes on solutions here then. We've got five minutes to go. Uh, Joseph, come on in here and tell us if the spring bear hunt, limited as, as it is, in this pilot project way in four or five cities in northern Ontario, is an approach you object to, 
what's a better approach that still solves the problem of, quote unquote, I know you don't like this, Mike, but nuisance bears? Well, uh, as I said before, I, I don't think that a pilot project like this is, is going to uh, make much of a difference. Right. So what's I, a better alternative? I... Right now, I don't know if people are aware of it, but uh, it hasn't been brought up. Uh, the fall bear hunt has been extended uh, in some wildlife management units up to three and a half months. So, you know, if, if you can't kill enough bears in three and a half months to reduce the population, uh, I don't think that an additional month and a half is, is going to make much of a difference um, uh, in, in the spring. Uh, that's my view of it. Uh, I would say that uh, bringing back the uh, bearwise program um, with, uh, you know, working with the municipalities and um, instituting bylaws, uh, as I mentioned before, as it was done in, in Elliott Lake, would definitely make a difference. Uh, we also did some research on uh, bear relocation, and even though, um, you know, trapping and moving bears uh, out of town does not work for older animals, uh, five years and older, it actually does work uh, quite well uh, for younger animals, especially males. And and so uh, these two and one year olds uh, are usually uh, the main problem in, in uh, residential areas when it comes to problem bears. Um, and uh, they can be effectively removed by trapping and relocation. So again, I would say that, uh, you know, instead of um, investing money into a properly conducted uh, program, the MNR is, is passing the buck uh, onto first the municipality, and now it's uh, resident hunters. Okay, um, let me get some but, reaction here in the studio. Mark, you heard some of the ideas here, extend the bear hunt in the fall or trap and relocate. Are either of those preferable options to the spring bear hunt? First of all, trap and re relocate was uh, not cost effective. There was a, an obvious reason why the MNR would want to uh, sort of eliminate that portion of the BearWise program. But now that we're talking about BearWise, absolutely, we agree that education is very important, but several North American bear researchers have identified the fact that effective black bear management requires both an educational component as well as a harvesting component. Now the harvesting component, as Joe said, has been extended in the fall, but that does absolutely nothing to curtail human bear conflict in the months preceding the fall hunt. All it does is help to maintain or maybe even reduce bear populations, so and not, that's the point. not an adequate alternative. Absolutely not. The timing is absolutely key of the spring bear hunt in that it occurs prior to the peak of the problem bear season. So, that's a thumbs down. Is there a better alternative that you can see other than this pilot program? I think so, Steve. I think there's some merit to, uh, to the trapping that uh, Joseph spoke about because he spoke about the younger males or the younger animals that can be trapped. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're walking in our cities and our towns. Surely there's a better alternative than having them walk in our cities and our towns. Even if trapping them and relocating them isn't as successful as we want it to be, it does get them off the streets, and that, that's something that we think we're in favor of. The whole management program, there has to be one developed. The biggest problem I see is there is no more interface in assessing the actual conflict itself. So it's a phone call, the police show up, they shoot the animal, somebody has to dispose of the body. Rather than somebody with the skills coming out, assessing the situation, determining, is it a life or death situation? Who should that be? That should be the Ministry of Natural Resources. It should, be the, people who are, it should be the people who are should experienced to do that. Officers, they should be going out. Wise. If our lives are at risk, somebody should be coming out assessing, is this a life or death situation? What's the management plan if it is? If it's not a life and death situation, then how are we moving forward? There need to be partnerships with municipalities. If you've got all these traps sitting there doing nothing now, we've asked for them, they denied us them. Help us loan those traps to us, teach us how to use them so we can at least get them off okay. our streets and have a partnership. Peter, you get the last word on this. I want to say one more thing because we did a program last night where we had six women on this set talking about why we don't have enough female guests on this program. I can tell you we invited two prominent female political leaders from Northern Ontario to join us in this discussion tonight. They both declined. Not they're, that we're not delighted to have you here. The up there, so. I don't want to say why they declined, <laughs> but they declined. I got in trouble last time I put explanations on the table. But we thank Joseph Hammer from Cambrian College for joining us on the line from the campus of Laurentian University in Sudbury. We thank Peter Politis, Pleasure. the mayor of thank Cochrane. You. We thank Mike McIntosh from Bear With Us and Mark Rickman from the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. Thank you, Steve. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.